this is the talk I given a name as Leave On, Dream On because it is all about uh, uh, my dream and how I am fulfilling each of them and again I am started dreaming it, right? So yeah, uh, definitely all of us see the see dreams, right? Not those dreams I'm talking about while sleeping we see, right? These are the dreams we see when wide open eyes, right? And those are very tricky, believe me. So you, you just desire them and you just go behind to fulfill them. And again, you dream for another one. Again, you fulfill them. It's a kind of a cycle goes on. So I just wanted to like uh, take you all through this uh, uh, through the cycle of journey, what I went through till now and what I aspire for future as well. So I will just uh, uh, say how it uh, started. Um, there is not a specific incident or any like uh, any story behind it, how the, the passion about wildlife and nature has started. So maybe it was there from the beginning. Uh, just a lighter note, I will share one uh, like a story what my mother has told me. Like um, like when I was like kind of a few months old, uh, she put some oil massage as you do for the babies, right? And keep it in the morning sun. And uh, she did that and she was just little turned back and it looks like one group of langur came and picked me up. Okay, so um, I just uh, uh, kind of uh, spent few moments with those langus um, uh, before my family rescued me again back. So when I grow up, my mom says like I became one of them, it seems. Okay, but uh, jokes apart, uh, like uh, see somewhere I feel my like kind of peaceful and solace in, in between the wilderness and nature. So, like as a child, I was uh, I was a bit of a uh, lonely child. It seems like I don't have much of friends. I had my cousins uh, who used to visit us in a, like in a summer vacations, and we'd have a lo lot of good time because three of us uh, were in the same age. So, uh, but uh, apart from that, uh, in childhood, I had hardly any friends. So, uh, so I made friendship with the trees and plants. Like uh, I can say, when I was a kid, I used to stay with my grand grandpa, and uh, my grandfather is a kind of a, uh, belong. Is a uh, by profession he was a doctor, but he belonged to a farmer family. So we had a like a garden, which is a kind of a mini forest. So with a lot of trees. Okay. So I'm just telling this because every time I go, I share so many things with the trees I go play with them even I read books to them used to then uh, if I'm happy I go share my feelings with the tree and if I am like a sad I go and complain to them um, so that is how the bonding has started with me for the uh, nature and uh, wilderness so I should thankful to my background as well kind of uh, then coming to the photography so uh, photography also how it started there is no particular story behind it. So uh, that I will tell a little while, but uh, because uh, if it is a uh, passion for me or not, um, it was, uh, I was not aware of it because the, because the family background I came from. So like uh, we have, like I have to pick one of the passion. We have given only two choices, either engineering or medicine, right? So I have to pick one and go ahead then like it started with the studies then job then uh, i got married then i have kid i have a daughter who is 11 years old now um so uh, like uh, i couldn't like a kind of a comprehend any time that this particular passion is within me until my daughter was uh, when one and a half years old so i was like kind of a lot of uh, going through a lot of like that maternity turbulence uh, i'm saying this though she is the best thing ever happened to me but uh, motherhood is not a like a simple thing it takes a toll on me so within that I wanted a break actually I wanted to do something which will relax me which will like kind of give a little bit of uh, peace in within me then I thought let me go ahead and capture the uh, capture the surrounding capture the nature capture the wilderness then uh, the next thing I did I just uh, brought a, my first uh, DSLR, which is uh, Canon 550D. Uh, then, uh, like, uh, the, then I didn't go outdoor much, but I just start clicking a lot of picture of my daughter, my garden, my, inside the home, and everything. 
then uh, when she was around two and a half years old, then I thought maybe I should step out of the house and explore the wilderness. I should explore the wildlife. Uh, then when you come to the wildlife, the first thing comes into our mind is tiger. Even I started with tiger. Right. And when you wanted to uh, see tiger in wild, uh, nothing is a better place than Ranthambur, which all of you will agree. So uh, then I start, I just uh, put up a like kind of a soul, uh, solo trip to Ranthambur. I planned it, though I got a lot of reluctance from all over, even from my parents itself, right? Like uh, they're like, uh, what kind of mother is that leaving two and a half years old daughter behind and like kind of a, putting up a solo trip to Ranthambur. But uh, I really thankful for my family, my husband who has supported me a lot in that. They are ready to take care of this kid when I am away. Uh, then rest is history. I landed in Ranthambur for a 10 days trip uh, with, uh, with the travel. I spent around seven days there. Kind of. So uh, first uh, couple of uh, safari in Ranthambur, I didn't see anything. No, I can't say I didn't see anything. Actually, I saw, I didn't see tiger. But uh, believe me, Ranthambur is a very wonderful place for birds, actually. I see a lot of birds uh, during that trip, actually. But uh, only thing that I was not very aware of the bird species and I couldn't like kind of relate to it. Only thing I remember that I saw paradise flycatcher first time there because I remember because the guide told me, yeah, this is the paradise flycatcher. I saw a white bird with a long tail, it's flying away. Anyway, so on the third safari, we saw a tiger and the cub playing in the water, right? So, um, what happened? Huh. So uh, this is the uh, my first uh, tiger image in wild. Uh, this is just a one-year-old cub, and uh, this was taken in Canon 550D, 18 by 55 kit lens, and auto mode and JPEG format. I didn't know what is other modes in the that time, what other modes of in DSLR. I was not absolutely not aware of what is raw format also, right? So uh, this is like. The moment I saw it, like I was like completely like lost myself. Just look at the fail, look at the look, how they're looking, right? So if somebody looks at you like this, I don't think you can hold your yourself within, right? So uh, suddenly I felt a little jittery in my body. Then I realized the guide is like um, literally shaking me. He, ma'am, you have to take pictures. I'm calling you from so many times, but you are not listening. I said, yeah, I have to take picture. Then I lift my camera and started clicking. And I find it is not very clear. I said, what's wrong? This is my first tiger in wild. And I am not able to see through. Pictures will not uh, come clear. Then what's wrong? Then I realized nothing wrong in camera. My eyes are completely watery. Like kind of. So that's why I was not able to see through the viewfinder. I have to wipe out my eyes. Then again, start clicking them. Uh, then rest of the trip to Ranthambur was wonderful. After this sighting, I saw a lot of lot more tigers there, kind of a lot of them, then create a lot of memories and uh, get back home. I have a lot of stories to tell everyone. And uh, it was really exciting to see tiger for first time in wild. I know, I understand we saw tiger, before that I saw tiger in zoo. Like in childhood, you used to go to zoo and see the tiger. But believe me, seeing a tiger in zoo and seeing a tiger in, a, in wild is completely different. They are not the same species, I can say. <laughs> okay. And then I came back. Uh, the only thing was bothering me was uh, the understanding the technicality of the DSLR. Because I was not very happy shooting it is in auto mode. It's like a point and shoot. I was using a DSLR, right? So from the manual of the DSLR, DSLR, you can only get to click in auto mode. You won't be able to have idea what is AV, aperture priority, what is manual, what is like other modes there. Then I thought, what can be done? Then I searched in the internet and whatever the first workshop, photography workshop came into the list, I enrolled for that. And um, I joined the workshop and uh, learned the technicality of the camera. In that workshop, there is another aspect of wildlife I get to know, which is, which is this rainforest. This is our own Karnataka's rainforest, Agumbe. This is one of the like favorite place in Earth for me. So, uh, like, uh, like why I love rainforest, right? So, I we all know the benefits of rainforest. It is the kind of funds of Earth, and it. Um, 
uh, supplies the uh, water for round the year for us but apart from that uh, why my like love attachment for the law, uh, rainforest is uh, due to this the pure untamedness the no structure no rule it can grow in in its own way so that particular aspect about the rainforest what actually attracts me and apart from that the kind of flora and fauna it holds um, like that kind of uh, variety i don't think you will get in any of the forest right if you go to the like any normal forest where our mammals are there you get the mammals you get the birds but if you go to i'll just go go to that uh, different fauna i'll cover that in a little bit of but uh, in rainforest the kind of flora and fauna you get so that is something is really amazing okay so in rainforest what exactly the species which is so close to my heart is this i know people say it is uh, like a creepy it's scary how can you love snake so much but believe me they are not so even uh, before that i used to also feel the same but once you really closely look to look to them and closely experience them so they are not creepy or scary they are really really beautiful actually so how i get, get into this right so if you see this is particular uh, snake which is hump nose viper this is the the first uh, snake i have uh, like kind of take a picture this is like uh, my first trip to agumbe right so um, so sorry about the picture quality these are the all like uh, first sighting what i got from the snake right? that's why just i wanted to share with you guys so this this has happened right this is a kind of a, a dramatical event actually in agumbe so uh, in agumbe we, we all we used to do every day is a night walk actually there are a lot of nocturnal animals are there so which where you can experience them so we always go in the evening also so one of the night walk we saw this guy is like kind of calling around and just sitting in the path actually middle of the path and it was so amazing and we just a mild torch light we saw that and we just surrounded it and try to take the picture and this is the first time i could see uh, a snake through my viewfinder so close so closely and uh, instantly the beauty of this uh, species has like caught me then and there like if you see this eyes are like that that golden copper mix eyes it is so wonderful like how somebody cannot be attached to them right but uh, this hump nose viper that is the one time i saw after that i never could see them <laughs> right and then uh, then this particular uh, species is called malabar pit viper so this is another favorite species of mine so yeah. so this uh, this we got any time you go to agumbe we will get uh, this uh, particular guy they are very like kind of a, easy to spot there and they comes in a different morph i think this is the green one uh, this is mostly common and you you have this orange you have the uh, yellow then i think purple is also there shiram can uh, know it better than me but which is very rare it seems but yes uh, this is this is a piece of work actually from the nature and the other one is other other very commonly found snake is this uh, hum, this uh, green vine snake so i call this like a kind of a damsel or diva in the snake species right so with this long kind of face and that curved eyes it looks really really beautiful right so when it slithers through the vines it like a kind of a like a dancing moment it does kind of so i consider them as a, like a diva and damsel of the snake species okay then after that what snake what next uh, this guys frog okay so before that like i used to i never could connect with the frogs i used to think they are just a food for the snakes no nothing else but till i met this guy this is this is also on my first trip to agumbe this is a malabar gliding frog so um like there are variety of the frog in rainforest like which uh, which will definitely caught your eyes this is not like the frog we see around in the city but uh, if you go there are different colors different size like they look so cute actually yeah i, I can like relate that relate that word to them actually so apart from malabar uh, like this gliding frog we have like uh, bush yellow bush frog which is a very tiny and bright yellowish color then we have the blue eyed we have a nice blue ring around the eyes and they're so pretty and so beautiful they are actually okay so uh, 
So like, uh, if you see, I just go back a little. So, sorry. If you see this particular picture, so this is so beautiful, right? Like you just like kind of, you kiss this frog and it will become a frog princess, right? You can relate to that actually, to that fairy tale story, <laughs> kind of. As the same guy, it is then daytime, it was sleeping. And uh, when we went to the nighttime, it waked up and he was all alert. <laughs> Okay, then apart from snakes and frogs, as I told this for uh, flora and fauna is widespread in Agumbe. So we have so many other species also. Like this is another iconic species in uh, uh, Agumbe, which is uh, called Draco. Not that Draco Malfoy from Harry Potter. It is Draco, the flying lizard actually. And so I can watch them like kind of gliding from one tree to another like hours together, but you don't get to see them gliding more often. Because they're very camouflaged. If you see the bark, they will just get hidden. Actually, you will not be able to get them until unless they open up this yellow thing from their throat, actually. And they and it is so beautiful to see that they just glide from one tree to another. And they do, I think, for guests uh, just to uh, kind of uh, to stay away from the predators on the ground. Kind of. Then, uh, uh, apart from Draco, we have this small, tiny guy. It's a tree hopper. See, one thing I uh, like like about macro photography because some of the things you can't see in your bare eyes. Our human eyes are not so strong that you can see each and every aspect of the nature. So this is this is not something you can see in your bare eyes. Like only thing I could realize this beauty when I saw this particular uh, tree hopper through my viewfinder. This is so beautiful, right? It looks like a little small, small pearl kind of everywhere in the body. This, this is the like a fun, like a, all the fun of the rainforest, right? Then we have this Nilgiri uh, forest lizard. So this guy actually caught us in surprise. Like um, we were uh, shooting one Malabar uh, pit viper. Like we have no, uh, we have no clue that uh, somebody is just behind us actually. So we just finished shooting and just turned back and this guy was in front of us. So yeah, this is another aspect of rainforest that there are surprises all over. You have to just find it out and see. Uh, then uh, like uh, then a few more uh, species also like this particular guy is like kind of eating the grass over here. That is some actions happens. But this is a very tiny guy, actually. It's not so big. But you have to have very observant to kind of catch this kind of actions where it is happening and take a capture and take a picture of it or capture the moment. It's the irony of life. I don't know whether I'll be happy for this guy or I'll be sad for this uh, grasshopper. Anyway, that's life. Then apart from this, uh, rainforest, rainforest holds another beauty, which is called fungi. So before I explore Agumbe, I used to feel fungi is nothing, just uh, the, those mushrooms, that white color mushroom we get, right, to, for cooking and eating, right? So that for me, fungi is that much only, that knowledge, right? And uh, and sometimes used to see in my grandpa, grandfather's garden, some that wood fungi used to come. So he used to tell, this is not edible, this is edible and all these things. But I never saw fungi apart from white color. But in Agumbe, when I first uh, like uh, went, I was like amazed by the uh, kind of the variety or variation of the colors and the shapes and size of the fungi. This is a particular is a cup fungi, which is a deep orange color. Color you have the fungi with the deep red color. Uh, different different varieties of different varieties of colors of fungi are there. It's so amazing to explore all of them, right? And then this is just a kind of a uh, frog in the water. We can see some kind of this kind of uh, images also. Like I just wanted you to see the reflection in the eyes and face, how it is there. So that is the significant of this picture. Okay, so uh, so Agumbe is a place like uh, it uh, never's like kind of uh, done with me because last six year I have been gone to Agumbe around five times, and believe me, I am not done with it. Every time I go, I find a new aspect of it, and it's it, it's. It looks completely new to me, as if I never come here, kind of. So I go to the same place, I stay in the same place, and uh, room around, I go explore the same like trail. But every time it is new for me. And definitely I will go again and again. And I'm sure it will be having a, something new for me. 
Um, okay, so uh, from as I told you, from last uh, six years, I have been gone to Agumbe five times, but I never could see one particular species which is Agumbe is famous famous for till the last time. Any guesses what can be? I know nobody can talk. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is uh, this guy, King Cobra. So every time I go to Agumbe, I, my eyes were looking for them, but I could never get it till the last year. Till last year, in April, uh, we went and uh, we had a plan to go to this April as well, but uh, for this uh, COVID-19 and all thing that, that was cancelled and I was damn upset. And this time I wanted to take my daughter along with me also. And she's also quite upset about it. <laughs> right? And uh, we, I just wanted to show this uh, like so this spaces to her because why are you know because when i last time last year when i came back and i showed her this picture he, this is see i i told her i saw king cobra finally and she was really excited and uh, when i show her this picture her first reaction is how cute i mean like if one that time she was 10 years old if a 10 years old can tell this is cute i don't know how how we can like give an adjective like they're creepy and uh, like scary kind of things okay so coming back to this uh, so this is a kind of a mating pair uh, we are like kind of observing them because we uh, you can see this is the male which is like kind of surrounding the area and the female is inside this burrow she's hiding there see their life is not so simple as, as i like if i understand so uh, we just saw them for two days but i'm not sure before that how many days this thing is going on and after that how many days that rituals will go on before they could meet right if you know this uh, king cobras are carnivorous they eat other snakes and they eat their own species as well right and the the female is here the next picture yeah this is the female you can see just keep little and he'll go back into the burrow. and uh, this uh, sorry and this male will be kind of surrounding and waiting for it. And sometimes this male will also be inside and uh, he will come back with a bloody face. Maybe they both will fight or something, but he will come back with a little bit, bit blood stained all, all around. Again, he will wait, he will surround the burrow. And this will continue like till we are there for two days, two days it was continuing, but uh, never know how many time, how many days it will uh, keep on continuing. King Cobra holds a very complicated uh, life cycle. Just I will just touch a little bit because I wanted to share. This is a very amazing thing about the King Cobras. So uh, once uh, once the female King Cobra like uh, kind of uh, lay eggs, I think it is the only snake species which built nest. Then built nest, the female will build nest with the all dry uh, leaves on the forest floor and put it a pile of it and like kind of a, uh, cover the eggs into it and it will like kind of incubate in the, inside that. But what happened, you know, like uh, it will be guarding the, uh, it will be guarding the eggs and uh, everything till the moment the egg will hatch. Just before the egg hatches, he will, she will abandon the egg and go. You know why this is happens? Because she will be uh, like kind of a guarding the, the egg without eating without like any any food for a long time and she will be very hungry and if she doesn't leave the egg there she may land up eating those babies okay so for that reason the about to the egg hatch he, he will just she will just abandon them so that is how complicated their lifestyle is and even for the mating mating also like uh, until unless she is sure that the male is approaching to make love not not to eat her she will not allow it. This is what happened in this case also. Like he is just sitting there. The male is like patients fully surrounding. Kind of, isn't it complicated? And uh, we say that our life is complicated, right? <laughs> okay. So uh, this is uh, like all about amphibians and snakes. The next uh, aspect of my photography is the birds. Okay. So this is my first uh, bird I have shoot, uh, I have taken an image that is uh, Malabar trogon. 
this is also it's a very high far away in the branch and i took this in same for my first uh, dslr 550d and uh, lens was 55 by 250 and it was heavily cropped image definitely uh, for sure because the bird was very far away um, so what is this astonishing about bird photography i could never able to do this actually kind of uh, yeah before that like can you do, can you make it out which uh, where i could have taken this bird photograph photograph of this bird this is also in agumbe actually because uh, that's what i wanted to say ki agumbe is not only for the like uh, snakes and amphibians it is for the birds also like uh, um like uh, in the Agumbe only, then my first trip, uh, one of the morning I woke up with a kind of a typical whistle sound, right? Like I thought uh, somebody is whistling that way, the boys whistle to tease the girls, right? So that kind of sound I got. I said, in the forest, who is the boy is teasing like this in a whistling and all? So I was a bit confused, kind of. Then I went back and asked uh, the others, like uh, I, I heard this kind of whistle, who was whistling? Then they told me this is not any man or any boy or any human being. It is a bird. This is called uh, like uh, Malabar whistling thrust. So this is so amazing about it. Like you can't even make out ki whether a like a, a human is whistling or that is a bird who is whistling that. And uh, believe me, that wherever I went to Western Ghats for my photography trip, I almost every time wake up with that whistling call. <laughs> Okay, now coming to the birds, why, how I get into the bird photography. I could never able to like kind of uh, take a bird picture because either I will not able to spot them or I will spot them once they are flying away, right? So uh, it was very difficult and it was kind of a challenge I accepted. No, everybody is taking such a beautiful bird picture. Why I should be kind of a leap behind? I should also take it, right? So, uh, so uh, I'm just telling you the the most fun part of the birding is like to find out the species of the bird. It will be like this, like this, uh, this particular bird and uh, the, the, I think the wingspan span is a bit, bit longer, tail is a bit longer, maybe this is greater something, something, right? Or no, no, it is not like that. You can, if you see the beak, uh, the beak has a, like a, a black tip in the end. Okay, this may be lesser something, something. The bird will look the same, huh? but <laughs> the description, right? Then it will be like, no, no, I, I think uh, the, look at the, below the throat, there is a spot is there. Maybe this is common something, something. I tell you, man, the lion is a lion, tiger is a tiger, elephant is elephant, but you can distinguish it completely. Even the, for example, in the snake species also, right? For the pit viper, in the pit viper, you can say a lot of variations are there. Like you have Malabar pit viper, you have uh, hump nose pit viper, you have saw scale viper, like a uh, like lot of vipers are there, right? And you can just from far away, you can make it out, which is what kind of, but this birds that greater, smaller, common, oh man, <laughs> you will crack your head. But sometimes it happens like when, like when I came back from the, any any birding trip and I just open up my images and try to identify the spaces. You don't believe I will be having some like some two three books in front of me, some ten twelve sites open in my laptop, and uh, I was like kind of uh, doing some doctorate research to find out a species of the bird actually. And believe me, that is the fun of birding. So that is how I got attached to the birding actually. And uh, within birds, I got attached to more over to the raptors. Uh, why raptors? Maybe they're uh, more expressive, maybe they're more like their strength, their vigor and how they rule the sky. So that actually attracts me more uh, in birds. So these are the uh, images I took in um, uh, Tal Chapar in last trip with Data. Um, so uh, I have been gone to birding before also a lot of places in Gujarat and LRK as well, right? So uh, see a lot of uh, raptors also there. But uh, the variation or the variety of the species you got in Tal Chapar, it was mind blowing. Or maybe that trip we are so lucky that we got so many, I mean, there is not a single, I think it was a three days or four days, four days trip. And there was not a single moment is there that we are not clicking anything. To just continuously, we are just in the out in the, in the park and we are clicking. This is uh, this is done. Then go to the next one. Oh, I got saw something there. This click. Then we saw something there. Just click. So this this was a kind of a routine in Tal Chapar actually. So I, I I don't know. It is always like that. Or I am lucky to have that kind of <laughs> thing. 
So for me in Talcha for life or is this Bonelli girl? Okay, so starting up because I never saw this uh, particular guy in my life actually till that point of time. So starting up the trip only I just kind of a, uh, keep on telling Bonali girls, Bonali girls, Bonali girls. So everybody was listening and they were keeping quiet like why this uh, girl is getting crazy behind it. Okay, so one of the afternoon drive, like uh, morning we spent with this guy, that pallid harrier. Um, uh, so, so this is first time. Okay, let me finish this pallid harrier first, then I'll come to the Bonali girl. So the first time I saw somebody, some raptor was playing in the water like this, like a baby plays in the water. This guy was playing like that. Like we spend a lot of time with it. With it, it will go. It will flash water, then fly in the water, then again it will sit in the water. The flash in the face. It was like completely. It was really amazing to see how they can just. Uh, play around in the water. Huh. Then coming, this is a common crystal, so we saw a lot of them there. Yeah. Um, then coming back to Bonali Eagle, so uh, in the afternoon drive uh, into the park, so I just uh, told the guide, uh, so like, yeah, just like Bonali Eagle, dikha do. like just show me one Bonali Eagle. So he just didn't tell me anything. I think he knew where is the Bonali Eagle. He just gave me a, like a kind of amused look. And he just turned to front. Okay, then we entered into the park, and uh, there it was in front of a one water body. It was there, and the gracefulness. It didn't fly. Okay, I we were there for I think uh, uh, I lost the count of time. Maybe good uh, half an hour. We are with them with it. I think Ram was there with me in that vehicle. So. Um, we had, he's just kind of walking, so graceful walk. You can see the legs, right? It was like, a, it's amazing walk style, actually. It will walk, it will just drink some water, then it will come back, it will go up, again down, again drink something. Like, this was continuing. And believe me, in our vehicle, vehicle there was a pin drop silence. Like, nobody was talking that whole time. It was like either the shutter is clicking or we are just silently observe it. Okay, this is the like kind of way, like I can tell something, Ram is on the call, I can tell something about him. <laughs> he is a guy who can't stop talking for five minutes also, right? But he was quiet for half an hour. That was amazing, <laughs> right? So I mean, that is the kind of a magic of the, that particular moment. We are just observing it and clicking it. Again, we are just observing it, looking at it and clicking it. So that is how it goes. Uh, then a few more uh, raptor images. Uh, this is, uh, uh, these are not from Tal Chapur except this uh, Egyptian uh, vulture. This is also a life form for me in Tal Chapur. We got to see it. And uh, this is uh, the Griffon, Himalayan Griffon. That story I will tell you uh, how it unfolds, right? So we saw there. And this is a, like a very uh, first time we saw uh, in, um, I was in trip with, uh, with, to Gujarat. So this is the red necked falcons. And uh, I don't know what is the location there because we were driving in a highway and we just uh, saw this guy in just a little bit inside a farmland actually, they're sitting on the wire. I usually don't like to click any birds on the wear, but these guys, I don't think I will get anywhere else. Well, it is not so easy to find them. So whatever where or whatever it is, let's get a picture of it. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, so a lot of time I have, a lot of places I went for birding, a lot of time I went, but there is a one bird I always like kind of find, like kind of always look look to like photograph them. But never, I went to Gujarat, I think multiple times, couple of times I went, I think, uh, for the boarding trip. I searched everywhere, but I never could, could find that. Right, then that's why the last year I enrolled with daughter only for that particular uh, bird to Bharatpur. Now you know which bird I'm talking about. That is the icon of the Bharatpur, right? People go to Bharatpur for that. At least I went for that. Yes, that is Saras Kren. So we have seen demo, I have seen like a demo shell crane, common crane, demo cell crane in the sense in Gujarat when we went for the boarding trip, I have seen demo cell crane in a like a kind of number till your hundreds of them, till your eyes go. You can see the whole area is full of demo cell crane. And in LRK also, there are a lot of groups of demo cell cranes were there. But Saras 
screen i could never get we find so many in the farmlands in the forest in the like uh, swamps in the water bodies nowhere but at last in bharatpur you got to see them this is a very amazing bird actually this is like a, like this was a kind of a small family mom dad and this kid uh, they were like kind of foraging and they were eating in the in the water body then we just sat in the uh, hide and we are just kind of uh, clicking them and observing them and one more thing i will tell because more than clicking i love to observe those species actually like uh, like it is so amazing to see if you see i uh, closely observe this kid is a quite a naughty kid i, I can tell because all kids are like that so the moment the mom will get uh, like if uh, the uh, one of the parents will put the head down to pick up the food it will come behind and it'll try to snatch from the beak he will not put effort to like put he or i don't know he or she this is but it will not put effort to put the put her beaks down and get the food he will just wait till one of the parents will pick up their head with the food and he will snatch it so this kind of observation you will not get in uh, in your images right so if you see this image you will never get to know okay, what exactly their behavior so any time i go to the wild i just uh, take few pictures and then i put the camera side and i try to kind of observe them a lot and sometimes it happens like that uh, while clicking the picture that uh, bird flew away or that snake goes away or that frog goes away and then you don't get a chance to observe them uh, i feel really upset actually so uh, yeah it went out yeah that i would have seen it from some some more time so that is what happens with me actually right so um we covered uh, uh like uh, rainforest grassland desert what else left okay. so uh, so what happens like uh, uh, one of the agumbe trip uh, with dater i was coming back and uh, had a like a kind of a brief discussion with shriram like uh, shriram have you ever uh, think of doing uh, snow leopard expedition in spiti valley the next moment i thought like why i am telling this i am not going to able to do this right this is not uh, my thing right how i will do it and then why i am talking to talking to him like this then the discussion went off i thought he might have also forgot it and um, he might have ignored it like what this girl is telling whatever then we came back um, then after a few days uh, then i saw i got an email from data like on the trail of gray ghost i was like oh my god really means i my thought process became like divided in two portion one is like in the top of the voice it's shouting so she stay away from it because you can't do this because you have never been to himalayas and don't take himalayas lightly it is it is not be taken lightly actually you are not up to that point where you can explore to the such a high altitude and look for the gray ghost over there you have not gone to the foot so like a foothill of the himalayas forget about high altitude then i was like no i think i should be prepared more than i can uh, like think over this kind of trip i don't know whether physically i will be do it or not because i have heard lot of stories about himalayas before that um, then <laughs> another part is like a kind of a insane part actually of me it is telling like suchi if you can't do this you won't be able to do it you never know whether anybody will doing this trip again you never know so this, this is a chance go for it then i have been in this fighting for a, like a couple of days or four five days and it was like i couldn't concentrate on anything else apart from this fight only then i thought like until unless i take a decision so this fight will go on so let me like forcefully reply to shriram saying that i am in then after that we will see whatever happens then i jumped into it without knowing where i am jumping actually right i have no idea about the place i have no idea about like how it will be kind of then then once i confirmed to him then um, then then the next thing is the preparation right so i have to be doubly sure for my preparation because i had a like a quite a amazing experience for my first rainforest trip and that preparation oh man that was uh, that was like a kind of yeah for rainforest i could have saved actually if my preparation was a kind of minimum but here if something goes wrong 
there is no escape actually then i might have troubled shriram like anything for the preparation how to do this how to do that where to get this where to get that what i should take what i shouldn't take means a lot of questions means so he must be thinking like <laughs> what crazy girl this is anyways then not only shriram that i still remember that decathlon guy <laughs> he will never forget me in my whole life <laughs> like, i had like uh, made him to search decathlon all over india ki wherever i get my things i get my down jacket i where should i get my snow boot everything everything still no it is not there it, it is there in somewhere else i said wherever it is in india you just bring it here though we have time actually in hand to like uh, prepare all those things so one by one i just uh, uh, make the preparation so there is that then after that there was a in the least there was something called gaiter was there just to protect your uh, like trousers for getting wet in the snow that gaiter i couldn't get i told that guy so much time like i would visit frequently i would call every day of course you got my gaiter you got my gaiter but <laughs> him <laughs> lately he didn't pick up my phone also <laughs> right so but anyway so somehow we managed that because my i'll tell you my snow shoe was bit high so it was saved and getter was not required so anyway the rest is all fall into the place i boarded a flight to chandigarh then went to from chandigarh to shimla this is shimla from where we start our uh, journey so shimla is a very small town actually you know i think all of us know it's a tourist destination very nice cute and overcrowded little uh, hill station uh, um uh, so you can uh, you can find firam and manish in this frame uh, they are there they are there actually but i even i couldn't realize they are in the frame until unless i see this picture after i downloaded it <laughs> okay and so uh, so uh, after that uh, that we reach shimla then we just uh, have afternoon we reach we just walk around then we had our dinner and sleep and next morning we start our journey so first stop is the breakfast point i don't know where exactly this place is but there is a small uh, like a joint where we stop for the breakfast and uh, with hot paratha this is the view we got actually so uh, I, uh, like pardon me for the image quality because it was taken from the glass door actually it was glass door i have to take a picture on that so uh, what fascinate fascinate me in this picture is the layers of mountains you can see over here layers and layers till your eyes goes so uh, i will tell you like i will show you also the journey how himalayas like unfold each and each layer once you go up and each layer is like a, has its own beauty in itself you can see a lush green when you are in the shimla kind of level and uh, like a lot of uh, like uh, this mountains layers we can see and in the last i think you can see the snow cap mountain over here okay then uh, after the breakfast again we start our journey so we start our, we continue our journey along with the satlej river so you see that greeneries are little com coming down now so the way it was here it was bit less here okay so it was more going to going towards the rocky side now so uh, then we cross this kind of treacherous uh, highways also this is like this is a highway actually right you are driving into it so just look at the road like uh, like if little bit of misjudgment you don't know where you are right man man i consider myself like i have been driving for so long i consider myself as a very good uh, driver but give me a wheel here i won't be able to do it this is not everyone's cup of tea actually so you need a special skill driver to like kind of a drive in this kind of uh, road actually but same time it is so beautiful isn't it right so after shimla then our first uh, step uh, first stopover is on uh, a small village in himachal called kalpa so because uh, see uh, to go to directly to spiti it is uh, like a as a drive way it is maybe doable but uh, one should not do it because uh, like i think uh, manish has told already in a lot of other sessions also the main uh, key thing uh, in high altitude is the acclimatization right you can't just morning you start and evening you get into the spiti and you can handle it no you can't handle it. so you have to stop in between to get acclimatized and then go right so our first acclimatization stop was kalpa so we enter into the uh, like kind of a uh, that village is little late afternoon 
and uh, the whole village was like kind of sleeping in like winter hibernation not a single soul outside it was like completely shut right um, nobody was out i think uh, we uh, where we stayed only that hotel was operating that time so we went uh, we get down and we checked into the hotel then um, all everything was fine then i have been told that okay my because i was the only girl in the uh, trip i have given a special treatment like separate room for me uh, i i enjoy that uh, like kind of <laughs> things pampering actually so then i have been told that uh, like your uh, like your room is in third floor please go ahead then uh, okay fine and i was looking for like there is no lift you have to climb i said oh third floor no that's okay i have been climbing like ninth floor 10th floor at a time third floor will not be a problem man <laughs> you don't believe i climbed up to first floor and i was completely out of breath i was like what's happening right then i realized we are just 2800 feet uh, uh, feet uh, altitude now if this is the condition then how i am going to manage i am going to around 4800 or 5000 uh, feet uh, uh, high altitude right and uh, then i was a bit upset i said i don't know how i am going to like a cope in this i'm not sure i was very confident about and before that i can tell i am a fitness freak actually i am a fitness person i was very confident yeah himalay i can make it i can do it right kind of but that for one floor climbing actually taught me the lesson <laughs> boss you have to slow down <laughs> right then i was bit worried also ki uh, how i am going to manage and all but then i just uh, tell myself this is a part of acclimatization and we have to go to it go with it uh then uh, we reached the room okay then uh, i opened the room i put my things and i opened the balcony door what i see this is what i see in front of me so this is a kind this is a the kinder kailash mountain range is just in my eye level okay and it was a sunset okay this is a the golden ray is on the mountain is a pure gold actually what gold can be precious than this right so this mountain is white but see the top it is like pure golden color here right mm. so it was like you don't believe i i was like open that door and i was like ah like this for like some minutes like i was not able to talk like with the beauty i was completely blown out and then i got my sense back it was getting dark also because this this didn't stay for a longer it's just a few minutes or something and and this was taken in my cell phone i'm telling you because i didn't get a chance to take out because i just came in i just didn't get a chance to take out my camera from the camera bag it was all packed and it was fast moving actually up uh, the letter was going out so i just took out my cell phone and take the picture before it goes out kind of so um, means then i was like uh, i was like really waiting for the morning i said this is sunset if the sun rays is coming here sun is setting back side so definitely sunrise will be from the back of the mountain right then i was eagerly waiting for the morning that how it will look in the morning right so uh, then we just had dinner and uh, went to sleep and i was waiting for the morning to unfold i put my alarm clock before the sunrise so that i can experience it next day morning this is the view Okay, I think uh, you, if anybody attended uh, Sri Ram and Manish earlier sessions, you might have seen this also. But yeah, this is the view I just got in the morning. Okay, so see the kind of uh, like silver lining into it, and uh, the rays are coming behind. It's it's quite like quite heav heavenly actually. It's really divine. We feel so peaceful there. so and if anybody knows me they can tell that i am a person who can't sit in a one place for five more than 5 minutes even 5 minutes is difficult i can't sit i am like a like a like a impatient person but with this view i sat in front of it hours together i could have sit longer but I, we have to start our journey ahead kind of i was quite a bit upset that i have to get ready and had have breakfast quickly and we have to start for the because our target is something else not this but i promised to make a promise to myself that i am definitely coming back to this right and last year i went the same place with my family also and enjoyed the same view again 
okay this particular is not the same day the same place but not the same day this is the way back uh, when we are completing the uh, snow leopard expedition and we are coming back to uh, towards bangalore then we stop over the same hotel again and that was another magic have happened so if you see this one this was not much ice around it was little patchy it's not much but uh, this particular day when i reach we reach it was snowing heavily and uh, the morning is magical this is another view of that particular place okay and this is the same place when we are coming out of the place and you really feel bad like to leaving this place right really you wanted to leave this place this is one of the place i really like uh, uh, i can go back uh, like any time like given a chance right it's really beautiful anyways we have to go ahead we can't stay here for a longer time right so we start our journey again through the mountains so what do you think about this image right this is um, again sorry for the quality because it was in phone as well as from the car window shield to the vehicle the vehicle we are going that behind the window we have uh, i have taken okay so just to give you the feeling what exactly we feel about this uh, whole landscape you know, how you feel you feel it is a barren it is a rocky it's dry lifeless but same time i feel it is it is beautiful it is huge it is like kind of a treacherous i know like you can put all opposite adjectives to himalayas right it is scary it is beautiful it is uh, treacherous it is peaceful right so all this thing applicable to himalayas actually so we start our journey again like it is through all these things with chatting and all those getting the knowledge is from our mentors um shriram and manish right uh, then then we came to this point so till now we were following satlej river this is satlej river and it flows here and goes like this under the bridge okay but we have to go in this uh, road so we have to say goodbye to satlej river and we have to follow spiti river the spiti river starts from here so uh, this is such an amazing landscape right and how we human has carved a road into it just imagine what is the capability of human being can you see the road over here so this is also a very narrow road like some point of time it will happen that we are driving in the road and if somebody is coming from the opposite side he can't just cross us criss cross immediately we have to kind of go back or he has to go back like so that there is a little space will be there so that to road two vehicle can cross each other so that is how this is this is all about right it's it's a real real meaning of adventure actually if somebody wants a adventure you should travel by this road <laughs> and feel okay so again the landscape is getting more rockier here more like a, like a, no greenery absolutely now all greeneries have gone Okay. then slowly the landscape is changing so we are driving alongside the spiti river now we started seeing the little bit of snow patches everywhere so while on the road okay so this is uh, some amazing thing uh, like we stop over for uh, over and take pictures and enjoy the view also so uh, i guess uh, you guys might have uh, understood what it exactly it is it is a frozen waterfall it's so like Uh, i just saw this and the first thing came into my mind as if the time has just stopped there it's not moving it's like water is falling and it just stopped like somebody paused the time right this this totally like looks to me like that it would be so nice no if you pause the time when you were enjoying something right <laughs> so it is like that but uh, it was very tricky to go under it because you can see the spikes it's very sharp if something falls on you it go in deep inside your body actually it can be a big accident so manish and shiram was like restricting me not to go under it and then where i am listening to anyone i just went inside and took a picture and come out like within a second and escaped so that nothing should happen to me right but uh, it's a, it's an amazing creation of nature again right then again the landscape is changing we are getting more and more snow while going right so just just remember the first uh, picture of uh, like shimla when we started it was so lush green right the greenery is little reduced and the rocky patch started now the that white thing is coming into picture everything is like getting covered into the white slowly 
So this image, like to again, it was a very low light condition. Actually, it was, we have taken. I have taken this. Uh, but this particular image actually gave me a very sense of uh, peace and very soothing mind. Actually, it's a very cozy, surrounded by the all big mountains and uh, the river, and we are just small road we are traveling. Right. So uh, basically, if you see, <coughs> sorry. Spiti is like a uh, in Himachal, most of the uh, people they follow Buddhism, and the philosophy of Buddhism is like is the main thing is their philosophy is peace actually, and you can feel that philosophy in the air itself. It was so peaceful, so calming, right? I know I am like, like repeatedly telling peaceful, peaceful because it was like uh, kind of I am not finding any other words to describe it. Really. <laughs> okay, so uh, so this is a like a very uh, calming and soothing image for me, I can say. Then we go ahead, uh, like uh, once uh, while the day breaks, uh, we see this place, little place. This is our like, next uh, stopover for us, the small place called Kaza. This is taken from the uh, highway actually. So we are yet to reach the village. So by the time we enter into the village, it was quite dark actually. And it was uh, started snowing heavily as well. And uh, uh, I was sitting in the front seat of seat of the vehicle, and I saw like two red eyes are like kind of shining in the vehicle headlight. I thought initially I thought it might be a dog. Then um, then I thought like dog cannot be so less height. It was like little lesser height than the dog actually. And I was wondering what it can be. Um, then uh, like when the vehicle, once the vehicle go little like nearer from the headlight, what we saw it's a Himalayan red fox. It just looked at us, crossed the road, and vanished into the darkness. Then that moment, I like kind of uh, got a confirmation this trip is going to be an amazing one because the welcome was really good. You saw like Malan red fox yeah, while entering into the village. Anyway, so uh, amidst the darkness and heavy snowfall, we reached uh, like uh, Kaza. Um, then. Um, we spend uh, i don't i don't know like i will tell a little bit of my mind state by that time because we are already reaching the high altitude uh, quite a high altitude now so i was feeling uh, till the outdoor i was feeling very like excited very happy and all the moment i just step inside i feel so depressed like uh, nothing i was like liking it and i was like uh, kind of no i just uh, don't want to stay here now enough is enough i want to go back i was missing my family terribly because maybe the, because this is the first time uh, i am away from my family alone for a longer period it was a 15 days trip and um, then suddenly i started missing them i wanted to go back uh, i so many time i just urged to tell shriram that shriram enough is enough please are in something i will go back i will not go ahead with it then i will then i said uh, that see i had came for some purpose right after doing so many effort if i am leaving it it is not going to like it everything will be wasted let's let's have that push little then let's see how it goes and kind of and uh, that night in Kaza was like uh, very painful for me because uh, because some like a really different kind of uh, emotions were coming, and even if I could sleep, uh, moreover I couldn't sleep much. But even if I could sleep a little, then I used to see the nightmares and falling from the height, and I will just crash on the ground and I will just die. Kind of. And this particular nightmare was not the same night. Yeah, I used to get in like a most of the two three nights in in uh, like in a line actually. So maybe uh, that is the like effect the mountain does to you. Kind of. So um, so in the morning I was uh, all set. We are all set. Like kind of I, I was excited that I will get out of this place. I wanted to go outdoor. Outdoor was fine for me. But the moment I was indoor, I feel depressed. Um, but uh, same time. Um, Laraji, who is our uh, guide in uh, Spiti, he called like saying that uh, due to the last night snowfall, you guys can't come to Kibar. Kibar is the village where the final destination where we are going to stay for the rest of our trip. Uh, it's and then uh, you stay in Kaza. So let's see if by afternoon it, it opens up. Then I was really upset. I said I was looking for what to go out there. Then I have to sit because uh, sit in, in inside the room now because 
this is not the place we can just go around and room around out because the temperature was like minus 20 or something right right you can go outside but for some from brief minutes moments and you can just you have to come back in right so uh, somehow i could manage there are two small kids were there in the uh, homestay so they saved me actually that day <laughs> they like i tried to play with them discuss with them so i just kind of occupied myself all right then afternoon uh, we got a confirmation that roads are open we can start then we hit the road again so now you can understand the kind of road why we couldn't go right so the when the snow falls it get completely covered there is no way you can drive a vehicle through that right until unless this snow comes down and one first vehicle vehicle process it it makes it more down then you can just like a safely go there right so that is the reason why laraji told us not to come otherwise we get stuck right so again the similar mindset i was in the moment i was feeling happy the next moment i was upset i was cranky i was depressed then same moment i will be like shouting wow wow and all the next moment i will be again angry so <laughs> so this was happening till the till the on the way actually but later i found out maybe uh, like why it was happening to me right why this is kind of uh, like emotional up and down and have what i could make it out like uh, when you go to the high altitude the oxygen level in the air is very less actually it's a very thin layer and uh, and the what is the oxygen required for the brain it doesn't go to the brain right and brain plays a trick on you and you get into all this emotions you go through it, emotions right i know um, shriram has handled it <laughs> he knows well <laughs> right okay so <laughs> and then uh, so we get to see this kind of landscape like so you got the moon that point everything white 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 all you never know there is like a difference the land and the sky all mixed up it was like like so if you can read hindi it is this, uh, like kind of a uh, board is saying that uh, like oh god my internet okay i uh, hope you guys can hear me okay so it is saying that kibar is 3 km away so i was excited okay fine we are uh, like uh, getting into the destination but believe me this and i was like no i don't want to go to the destination i was just continuing this journey why we are going to the destination so completely confused it like uh, I, as i told you it mind is playing a lot of trick on you you are not in with yourself actually anyways so then after that we just uh, uh, after a few minutes i got to see this okay this is the kibba village like where uh, we were staying in one of the house so i don't know which one exactly a small village like uh, kind of uh, but if you see this in the first look you see that what is the speciality in that is just a small small house in a like a himalayan high altitude that's it right but something was there something magical was there right i never felt the way i felt when i see the first time this particular village it's it's, it's something different actually then we were waiting for uh, uh, lara ji and others to come and uh, just to show us where to go because the vehicle can't go beyond that we have to walk and somebody told the house is somewhere in the up in the hill we have to climb i said i am fine to die here i am not climbing up <laughs> okay so let me tell you one thing like i was not in a condition that i can put a one step ahead also it was like i was breathless my head was like kind of aching kind of things it was heavy and let me tell you one thing uh, before that uh, as i told you i am a fitness person i am a half marathon runner okay i at that point of time thinking that was like i was feeling ashamed like because like i am not able to like in a get a one step ahead also one step i am feeling breathlessness right so anyway i was like uh, uh, i was not holding anything i said uh, if anybody can carry my bags carry otherwise leave it or throw it out i don't care like right? kind of i just i'm just hold i was just holding my phone in my hand right and that is also feeling heavy to me i <laughs> wanted to throw it out and walk like that only <laughs> yeah i know it sounds so funny now but it was actually happened Kind of. so somehow like uh, with huffing coughing killing myself we reached the uh, homestay 
so sometimes I feel like we have done this even even though we have done this like kind of a three step acclimatization and stopover, uh, but still that was not enough. I think for me, at least, I was not feeling comfortable. So maybe it will take some more time. I just console myself. I said, stay here. Maybe it takes some more time to get acclimatized. The next moment, I feel like telling Shira. Shiram, I want to go back. I don't. I just don't want to stay here. I want to go back. Let me go home. Kind of. But it was again the same confusion state was there. Then, then we are sitting in the like kind of a uh, one area uh, in the common area waiting for our dinner. It was pitch dark outside. Suddenly, the lady of the house barged in, and she was like, "Guys, you want to shoot red fox?" I was like, "We just reached, right? What red fox is she is talking about?" It looks like um, one of our uh, yak calf uh, was killed by a donkey in the like afternoon or the late afternoon. They should have that and was it? But now few folks are there sitting on it. Okay, and so nice of her to like just came in because they know that we'd be interested to shoot that. Then, like, we all, like, grab our cameras and we just ran. We are a bunch of insane people, right? Where to check what is there, what is not there, because we don't run. We just can open the camera back, hold the camera, and just run. Okay, then I think you have to come down a bit uh, somewhere, and uh, there will be a kind of a cow pan will be there, and uh, that carcass was lying there. And that was a common like a kind of small wall is there, half wall. You can just put your camera and hide behind the wall because the red foxes are very shy there. They can sense that you, you are there, so they will not come. So it took some time for them to like kind of uh, get comfortable to come to the carcass and eat that. And they will come, they will eat, and suddenly they will go away. It was very fine. So once I saw that one red fox is eating it, then I started clicking. Guess what? The camera didn't have car. Means, oh, what do you feel? I just feel like kind of a killing myself actually that time. Then I said, Give up. I, I have no strength to go up on the hill and to the room and bring my car and come down again. I don't care about Red Fox. That was my condition. I didn't care about Red Fox actually. <laughs> exactly. Then seeing me, then Laraji was like, uh, what happened? Why you are not shooting? I said, no, forget it, Laraji. I don't have card in my camera. And he said, look, fine, where it is there, you tell me, I'll go and bring it. I told him, and uh, thanks to him, uh, he went and uh, got my card. Then I put the card in my camera. And uh, this was a, uh, again, this internet. Okay. So, uh, hope I am audible uh, and visible also. This was a, like, a, uh, that, 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 as I told you, it's a no light condition, actually. I have absolutely no idea. And my brain is not allowing me to think also, okay, what setting I should put in camera to get the image. But whatever, I could manage this, at least a decent image of uh, this red fox eating this uh, carcass, actually. So, so that is the story behind it. Okay, then we shoot it and we went back, have our dinner and sleep and we all are uh, like at least i was uh, like kind of excited to get into the himalayas uh that time uh snow leopard was absolutely not in my mind i just wanted to explore himalayas first because this is the first time i'm stepping into it right like kind of so that's why i was excited the next day you know first step uh, into the himalayas the first walk the first fall, <laughs> I was like, I, you like, I was like walking, and in the snow, I have no habit of walking in the snow. This is the first time I'm walking in the snow, actually, in that kind of a intense snow. A uh, so lot of time I fall, fall down, and get up, struggle a lot because if you see my background, this is the place where we came down, and the same place we have to climb up also. Okay, so that was a killer. That was a different story actually how we climbed up. Right. So um, uh, we get into the trail actually a bit late because with all preparations and all, this is the first day for us. We got a bit tired also, that high altitude sickness also, whatever it is. So we were quite late actually. So uh, our tracker, uh, Dorjeji, he was like, he usually what happened, I think Shriram also told that initially in the snow leopard expedition, the tracker will go ahead and he will just scan, the, the scanner will go and scan all area. 
and uh, he will just inform if he get any kind of possibility of any signs of the snow leopard he will inform and we have to go there then uh, when we reached there uh, dorjeji was not very happy he was a bit upset and he was like oh, you guys got late i saw the fresh bug mark and but he could understand also that it is it's the first time for us and uh, it should be um, you need some time to acclimatize as well then okay, he told okay fine yes he come and go to the other side you the right so he went and after a few minutes he started friendly waving and signing i don't know something he was like a thing and we seen that everybody started running okay and i was like oh god i can't run in that right then i was struggling a lot with this camera with this bag and all then uh, lara ji looked behind and he saw me i'm struggling with and he came back he literally hold my bag my camera hold my hand and drag me through the path actually you have to come then um, then uh, like uh, so this is the typical road how we uh, on the trail we go and all right so uh, i think that was the kind of uh, highest endurance level i have reached even i i have not reached to that level even my toughest run also so that few meters of run was like more tougher than all my half marathons anyways then i reached the spot uh, somehow like with huffing puffing and killing myself right and i saw uh, shriram and manish there like clicking cut 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 i said what they are clicking this is all stone mountains like some stone has snow on top of it i couldn't see something is so camouflaged right <laughs> they are clicking this one i saw that and something in me was telling like uh, no i don't want to click picture i really don't want to click picture so no i'm standing not picking up my camera to picture and standing and watching it kind of then uh, after a few minutes lara ji saw me and he was like uh, he was looked me a little amused and irritating uh, kind of a look and voice he told if you don't want to click picture give that camera to me i will click it and then i said okay okay i have to click it, click it then he tell that before clicking please clean your eyes otherwise you will not get like a good pictures yeah as mark that emotions what was flowing down from my eyes actually that time see today also when i am describing this uh, whole incident still my voice is choking <laughs> kind of like uh, uh, no this is something different actually this experience kind of uh, so uh, then uh, we got he start to get up and slowly walk towards the went in this path and back of the reach mm, okay then uh, then he went then we also go behind it okay so once we went the back side we got we saw that it's walking slowly and steady just see the walk how it is like kind of pissing up in that terrain it was a very very like a treacherous terrain actually the see the pug movement the the confidence in the walk and it clearly shows that this is his area and he rules here right right so like all these things happening then somebody shouted behind behind me ki hey there is a red fox red fox just shoot it i was quite confused to shoot this guy or shoot red fox this guy is a really notorious i'm telling you in a whole tree we would have like run behind it like you go behind like this they will run away then they will come from another side then you go behind that and come from another side okay anyways just uh, i was not very sure whether to shoot this or whether to just go behind the red fox but whatever like i stick to this <laughs> obviously and then then this is the post celebration after seeing the like snow leopard like nah, i was like not able to like comprehend the idea like uh, like how it can be possible like is it isn't uh, isn't we call this a grog ghost grog ghost and uh, like grey ghost and isn't it like kind of elusive cat most elusive cat but uh, we saw this just after 30 minutes getting into the trail it was really amazing. i think we are we are super super lucky otherwise it doesn't happen right and um, like i was not able to like kind of uh, uh, believe in myself that uh, i am a uh, the girl like me actually now i am staying in bangalore but i am a very small town girl i am a village girl actually Uh, the girl like me who can aspire to 
go to high altitude of Himalayas and see the elusive, the most elusive cat in the world. This was this was like a, literally a kind of a dream come true moment for me actually, and I give the full credit to Darter and uh, just to like for just gifting this moment to me actually, like and uh, and uh, Sriram and Manish as well. So Manish I met in uh, like uh, Shimla for first time. I'll tell you the instance of first meeting with Manish. Sriram introduced, oh he is Manish and he will be with our with us in the trip. He is like in the grumpy face. Hi. I was thinking, my God, this person doesn't smile, this gumpy face, I, I, I'm going to spend another 15 minutes with him. But believe me, Manish's like timely jokes, the lightheartedness was like kind of a savior for me in, this, in that like difficult terrence. Otherwise, I would have given up, <laughs> kind of. And uh, like thanks to Sriram and because of him, I could dream at least to go to this. Otherwise, it was not in my like kind of a list or a wish list or something, right? And uh, I can't uh, uh, thank more to my family also because we are there for 15 days, completely cut off from the world, right? And they were not aware where I am. I can't even kind of talk to them or tell them where I am. Whether I am alive or I am gone, there is no way they can. I have been back. Kind of anxiety they will be going through. Really hats off to them and and really thankful to them as well for this kind of. Uh, then uh, so then I just wanted to go back and uh, talk to my daughter actually to tell her that I saw those new leopard. And uh, actually, uh, there, as I tell, this is like a kind of completely cut off network is not there. But there is a one point uh, in that uh, homestay where only a single point, one small network used to come from the VSNL connection. And the phone has to be kept in the high in the uh, window pan. You can't move that phone from there. Otherwise, network goes, right? It will work only in that position. You can't take it in your ear also. You have to put in a speaker and talk. I said, whatever it is, I'll go and talk to my daughter or my family back home. Then I called them from there and I just uh, put in the sticker and put like it and talk. I told Shia, I saw the uh, uh, snow leopard. And she was so happy, like she was jumping. She was like uh, kind of uh, <laughs> shouting and just like, uh, like declaring all over the world. My mama has seen like snow leopard. Well, what can be better than that, right? Like she's, she even nowadays also she tells that mama i'm so proud of you i know <laughs> before that i say i'm proud of her she tells that she's proud of me that is the best gift one mother can get <laughs> uh, then the uh, sorry uh, then that is uh, done then we after this sighting we had uh, gone for uh, we or some other like is because this all happened in the morning time we had all day right so we just went out to see something else and we saw a lot of ibex they are just uh, moving around us and uh, like uh, so I had a lot of good time the next day when i came again came to the a different trail then uh, again laraji was like calling me frantically come this side come this side i was like then with listening this Manish and Shriram, they went, they ran away to that. And I was thinking, Ki, should we go? Because in high altitude, oxygen is like kind of asset to you, right? You have to spend it very wisely. So I was not ready to spend that leftover oxygen with me or leftover strength with me. So I was reluctant to go. I said, what will be there? It will be some ibex only. We saw yesterday a lot of ibex. I'm not going for that. Then I saw Laraji is running towards me because he's, he make it out that this girl is not coming. Then he came, again he took my camera, hold my hand and drag me again. Then I was like, what is exactly happening? Like, then I, we saw this another guy. When I was surprised, like if you are lucky, you see ghost and God once, right? Not again, right? But something went very, very perfectly. Because next day also we saw one. And this guy, we spent the whole day with it, actually. He was just sitting there doing some cat business, some cleaning and sleeping, then again picking, picking up his head and again doing some cleaning, again sleeping, again walking few steps again. So this is the routine was going on from around 9.30 in the morning till 5.30 in the evening. Okay, and we are just sitting there and observing it. So this is how we have sat for the whole day. So what do you think this is? This is pure madness, right? 
in like minus 20, minus 25 degrees Celsius with the snow. We are sitting there for, from morning 9.30 to 5.30. And just observing one snow leopard, right? <laughs> so, because, uh, yeah, you may think it is a madness, but that was the kind of a magic of that moment. And in that whole time, there is not a single moment we realized that we should go from here or we are feeling we are getting bored or something. Not a single moment was like that. This is the same Dorje ji. He will put the binocular and see, like, uh, like tell, like what exactly he is doing. And according to his voice, we will start clicking our camera. Right. So that, thus, I got this picture. So but then it, it was quite a far away actually. I was using 600 mm for this. Right. The earlier one was quite near, but this guy was a bit far. Okay. Uh, then I'll just say a little bit of the. Uh, the terrains where we actually walked and how it was like if you see here I'm walking in a like a uh, knee length snow actually this is like a normal kind of a trail we walk actually sometimes it goes to thigh length also because my high height is short so I can go, go to the waist length also sometimes go to it. This, the step you are putting you never know where it is landing so that is a very unpredictable so it is not an easy thing to like walk on that and this is a kind of a landscape we go uh, room around like this. So first time like or like I see that nothing is so beautiful. You can see nothing except a white blanket, but it is really beautiful. Okay, so I just, uh, this image is like to give you a kind of an idea, the elevation, how we climbed and get down. If for the reference, I you can see like a couple of people over here. This is the trail we go down and go up on this, right? That's and, uh, First few days were like literally difficult, but uh, once the day goes, you get acclimatized and you get used to it, and it was a bit uh, okay after that. Okay, so uh, this is like I'll just tell a little bit about the people of Spiti because after that sighting of two snow leopards, rest of the days were like all fun, right? We have met our target, we achieved what we came for, so we have no pressure now. So like we are rolling in the snow, we are staying in the snow, like we do whatever we want, right? So uh, this is a place in uh, called Lanza. So that's a small village again. So for there also we went to like search for the snow leopard again. So we were, uh, but we couldn't see there. But we are like walking for a long distance uh, up and down. And uh, even this image, this image is from there actually. So this is what we are walking there. And we're quite tired actually. The plan was like uh, we have to go to Lara. Laraji stays there. So this is Laraji. So Laraji's place we will go and we'll have lunch over there and uh, we'll come back. Uh, but uh, Laraji's place was a bit uh, far where that time where we were and our vehicle was near, right? So we all like we are so tired. We will not have lunch. We'll go back. Please, sorry. Um, because we can't go walk anymore. But Laraji will not leave you, right? So he said, just you guys relax here. You stay here. Just sit down or lie down, relax. I'll see what we can do. We can do. Then he went and this is Laraji's wife. This is another lady in the village. So three of them came back with all lunch packed and whatever it is required for to have a picnic lunch, right? All cutleries, utensils, mats and everything you tell. And we had a really lavish lunch on the snow, actually. It was like, a, uh, I, I think this is the best rajma curry uh, Laraji's wife has made. It was the best large rajma curry I have ever eaten in my life. Still did, till did. I'll never forget that taste. Then this photo was taken after lunch. We are just playing in the snow and some happy moment. <laughs> right. Uh, so uh, this is again the just little bit I'll cover the Spiti people like they are very very simple very affectionate very attra attached people actually so so many times it happens that we'll just room around into the village and we'll get invitation for the tea like kind of because these guys we don't know them uh, know them right we never met him in past and future also we never know when we are meeting them right so but the affinity they show towards you is amazing right even one uh, house we like i just put in and one lady was making arak arak is just a kind of a tequila short kind of things they make out of barley actually then i was interested how they are making it he she offered me a like kind of a little bit of small uh, portion it was very very warm actually it is not cold in that uh, cold temperature warm short or arak it was like amazing 
I keep on drinking actually. He's, she's giving me and I was drinking. And if she's giving out of affection only, then I have to stop because I don't want to get drunk actually in that moment, right? So, so that is the how the Spiti people, they're very, very close and very affectionate actually. I will never forget them. <laughs> Now come to the friends, what I got. There's another thing I could get back from that trip. See, this is Laraji, and you can see how he's holding me. He has always my back throughout the trip. He knows that this is the first time for her, and he was every time, he was taking care of me like a kid, right? And uh, very, very like a uh, very uh, soft hearted and very like a simple person. I never saw, saw such a beautiful soul actually. I know. And a good friend now. <laughs> okay, and this uh, two are, this is Dorjeji, which I have talked earlier with the scanner and the snow leopard sighting as all credit goes to him. Uh, he has made heaven and hell together to show snow leopard actually. And this is Navangji. This is a, like an all-rounder. He is. He was our cook. He was our caretaker. He was like uh, everything kind of. And one thing I'll tell because when I reached Kibber, I completely lost my appetite. I was not eating anything at all. Even I said no to chocolate. Can you imagine that? I said no to chocolate also. That. But uh, Navangji's food actually kept me going. Otherwise, I would have like left him and like lose it actually without eating anything. He made an amazing food actually. Miss them, yeah, miss them a lot. <laughs> yeah, now this too, like, uh, but uh, like, what I say, these are the, like, the friends I got for the lifetime now. <laughs> so this is like, uh, these are the things I get back from the trip. Okay, and for this uh, particular image, I will talk a little, but it may not be a very beautiful image, but it has a lot of significance in me, because this is the image from the window where we stay in homestay. Right. When we are not in the trail, I used to sit uh, beside this window and with this particular site in the side image, uh, I used to think, I used to just rememorize everything for the whole day, what we did, how we saw the snow leopard, how, what happens and all memories I used to recollect sitting here. So definitely this site is hold a lot of significance on me. Okay, so that's all. So what next? So this is what I have done till yet. So what are my aspirations next? And definitely, obviously, you will say, this is my aspiration. So we have, uh, uh, like, uh, definitely this place is for uh, the happy feet and free will. And definitely, I know it is, uh, uh, all you could have, uh, like, uh, get what exactly this place is. This is Antarctica. So uh, I definitely, I wanted to explore this mysterious uh, uh, continent. Um, like, uh, I don't have to explain again, because whoever attended Sri Lanka session in Antarctica, know very well why I wanted to go there, right? So if it is Antarctica, South Pole, why not North Pole? Okay. So even Sriram has taken a session on North Pole for a couple of days back. Now I am confused whether this or this. I know these are two pole apart and we need that kind of pole apart timelines in between also to achieve those trips, right? So I was uh, really confused now. Okay. Let's see how it goes. Then after that, sorry, after that, there is another aspect uh, which is left out why I wanted to explore, which is much more bigger than the land. This is ocean. A uh, couple of years back, I went to Bali. So Bali is the main reason to go there to explore Komodo Island. So Komodo Island, uh, and uh, in Komodo Island, apart from Komodo dragons, they have another aspect, this is the undersea. The first time I saw, like, uh, by the way, these pictures are not mine. Huh? I have not gone to these places, right? So this just, I took it from the Google to just to depict the places. Same, same thing for this one also. Uh, so uh, so uh, first time I did a snorkeling in Bali. So I saw the world for the first time undersea. This is completely different than what we see on the land, the color, the different varieties of the fishes, the other species, the coral. It is amazing. And that is the time I made up my mind that no, I wanted to go deeper into it, right? So this is also one aspirations I have. Okay, so and it will go on. There's few more also added, like I wanted to explore the one of the biggest rainforest also in the world, Amazon Basin also. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> so that is how we just keep dreaming and keep living. 
Okay, that's all from my side. And uh, before I'm uh, like wrapping up, I know we are out of time now. I have talked a lot. Before wrapping, only one thing I will tell because we all are like-minded people here, right? So uh, whenever we go in wilderness, like uh, like our pretty picture is not important. Like uh, whenever you love somebody, you try to protect them. You try to think about the welfare. Let's do the same thing for wildlife and nature as well, right? So first wildlife then photography okay thank you so much and uh, if you wanted to be be part of my journey in future also uh, or with me also then please follow me in my instagram this is my instagram handle thank you so much for listening patiencefully <laughs> over to you oh this, oh this was awesome yeah then i think <laughs> this is the second time i'm kind of listening to this talk and i think it gets better every time so this was phenomenal. I'm sitting in Bangalore in this heat, I think looking back at these pictures, actually like get something else. This is cool. Uh, so what we'll do is we can probably um, open it up for questions. If anyone has questions, uh, you can actually unmute yourselves and uh, speak, or you can type it out in the chat box if you have any questions for Kuchi. Yeah. Hi, this is Deepa here. Uh, am I audible? Hi Deepa, how are you? <laughs> All good, Suchi. How are you? <laughs> nice to listen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Suchi is also one of an inspiration for me to keep traveling. And okay, fine. There is something else also other than work and family. <laughs> so, one question I'll ask here is like, uh, how do you uh, mainly for my guidance? Uh, how do you keep the budget things may not be very easily available or uh, how, basically how do you do the budget planning when you plan for trips like this? Um, right, uh, Deepa, what I do like, uh, I have my wish lists actually, a lot of them are, right? So I just uh, prioritize them as we prioritize mm -hmm. work in my, our office, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I do the same thing. I prioritize okay. them, right? So then what is the first priority? I will target that. Suppose say Spiti. Spiti will, if I have to do Spiti, I have to have uh, this much uh, budget in my thing. So let's uh, walk towards it. Yeah, yeah, that's like, how is the saving pattern we, uh, for me, if we want to go somewhere, how is that we can follow, if you can tell some tips or tricks. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, what I do, like, uh, so I, I do a reverse engineering, right? So this is like, this is a trip I want to do in this year, right? And I am in this year, maybe I have two years now, right? So this is what I am doing with uh, Antarctica now, frankly speaking, right? So I know it is a very expensive trip and uh, not sure like when it will happen, but I am started my plan actually. Then I, I just gauge what is the total expenses of that trip, okay? Then I will see what is the timeline's duration is there. Can I, can I save that much money till I go to that trip? If not, then I will postpone that trip till I get my budget fixed for that, right? Then I start like saving a particular fixed amount, right? Okay. I will cut down everything. <laughs> I, will, I will not buy my dress. If you don't believe last one year, I have not brought my, brought a single dress for myself. Yeah, right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, not for the trip, but uh, this is for the trip also. And also for that, like I have enough dress and I don't need it, right? That's it. Right. Uh -huh. so, uh, so I will cut down a few of the things, right? Uh, eating less outside, you know, I'm a foodie, right? <laughs> so I <will> Yeah. Outside. <laughs> cut down on my shopping, cut down on my dresses, like a lot of things I just planning so that I can achieve that particular amount in per month to get into my bank so that it can be accumulated and I can go for the trip. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I do have a couple of trips, so I want to see how it goes then. <laughs> we can talk offline, Deepa, anytime. Yeah, yeah, sure, definitely. Yeah. Any other questions? Suchi, I had a couple of questions, but after looking at, you know, these pictures and you, know, you took us back to those memories, I forgot all the questions now. <laughs> I take that compliment, Manish. <laughs> and it's all gifted well by you guys only. <laughs> and I'm thankful to you It's all. your willingness and, you know, your hard work towards it. You are just like, like you are just the medium, that's it.
anybody has questions or everybody has forgot the question as manish <laughs> for me it's uh, not sure i forgot all the questions <laughs> you won't believe i was traveling in you know the same way we did on the trip like you know i was remembering each and every moment the way we spent the craziness the way we were rolling on the snow it was a crazy thing and i still remember the way you know i saw tears in your eyes when you saw leopard for the first time i, I still remember those things that's right that's what because because it was i'm talking second time but still when i'm talking that particular moment my my voice is choking <laughs> this is something magical actually so suti so arun here yeah no questions but yes i must appreciate that while you are narrating your whole experience i myself felt that i was with you traveling all the way right from shimla to spiti thank you so much arun it's really really great to hear that from you no believe me i was so engrossed into uh, this for one and a half hours now amazing stuff thanks uh, good evening my name is rohit <laughs> uh wonderful experience wonderful pictures i am been uh, you know following this channel in this lockdown uh i i experienced it with you with the pictures it was just fantastic and and believe me the next uh, opportunity whenever this lockdown gets over i i would definitely even i am a marathoner and i had a big doubt you know can i do it can i not do it and and you cleared my mind and now now i'm good to go Yeah. and and i should i should definitely do the next whenever the next opportunity comes in uh more interestingly i wanted to know was uh, uh such a long journey 15 odd days uh what were the lenses you were carrying to capture these amazing pictures and i have like a different variations of lens uh, i have this kit lens that 1855 which i took the landscape images and for the snow leopard i have uh, had this 600 mm lens Wow. Oh, yeah. oh, these lenses are too expensive. Now that's the no, second no, question. No, <laughs> no, no, no. I, I don't buy them. Like only that kit lens and one macro lens I own. Everything I rent actually. I don't buy them. I don't yeah, have yeah. Them. yeah, that's the that's the best option. So you plan yeah. much in advance and accordingly book it, and then uh, right. the six hundred mm lenses. Fantastic. Right. Thank you so much. Wonderful. And uh, I will follow you up at uh, the Instagram and uh, and even Antarctica is in my mind. I did the Alaska last year. Okay. I I I went to Alaska. I I it was wonderful. It's as a different zone. It's a different world altogether. I know. Yeah. You should do this trip actually. See, I wish I will. I will. I will. And uh, on the fitness level, one thing I must tell that okay, you and I may be marathoners, but Himalayan has its own rule. I was in the while you were telling all those things, I was thinking to carry some protein bars along. Maybe you know. <laughs> no. you don't feel like eating anything like if you drink water also it feels so heavy the hydration levels are required right right it is required you have to keep on drinking yeah 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 yeah, yeah. but uh, that only you feel like your stomach is full you don't need to eat anything but so you it happened with me i completely lost my appetite but just i have to eat something so that i can keep going kind of thing but then what was your eating routine in kibar while you were there the no, breakfast was, lunch dinner we have a breakfast lunch dinner nice because when we go out on the trail so we used to pack lunch so they uh, lunch i i assume after breakfast you must be leaving and then around lunch time you should be sitting there and having lunch whatever having lunch then you go come back and you have a dinner then in between you have the tea i used to love to drink those tea actually yeah so i mean yeah, they yeah. have this honey ginger uh, kind of a black without <clears throat> uh, kind of a uh, decoction yeah so that was amazing i just keep drinking that that was really nice yeah 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 even i experienced that same uh, feeling in alaska we were there for a seven day cruise yeah. and uh, every time we are outside we are just sipping over the coffee or the tea it was fantastic mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and they used to carry in the thermos also those. Uh, uh, yeah. Those how, how about the stars around there? Uh, stars. Did you not click star? I mean, uh, astro no, photography. I'm not into the astro photography much. I wait to learn because first photo of what I saw the show. I'll just uh, go back to that. Yeah, I saw the first one. Yes, I. I, I that was the first uh, like a star. Yeah. Photo. Yeah, yeah. Guidance yeah. of Manish. Manish is a master in that, right? Yeah, yeah, I saw. I saw him. I saw the last ones. Yes. So I saw. I thought. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yes. Is, yeah. 
himself and uh, do something. So this is this is where he was teaching me how to do the star trailing. Right, this is the first time I did it. <laughs> nice, very nice picture. Very Thank nice. you very much. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate it. Yes. Sorry for asking you so many questions. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. Most welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Suchi, well done. Suchi, well done. Well done. Thank you Suchi. so much. Suchi, well done. Oh, uncle, thank you so much, uncle. <laughs> I just want to ask one thing. Yes, yes. I just want to ask one thing. Is there an age limit for this? <laughs> Manish and Mrs. Sriram, you want to answer this? This is my uncle, my own uncle, my father's younger brother. And I am really enthralled. This is really fantastic. Yeah. So yes. I am thinking if, they, if you can put me in one of your trips, that would be great. Definitely, definitely, uncle. <laughs> We will go. Definitely. So all our blessings to you. Thank you so much. Carry on. We will do the trip. <laughs> oh. All right. So, Shriram, there is a question. Hello. Yeah, go ahead, Panish. Yeah, okay. So, you know, Arindam asked, what was one of the things, you know, that helped you through the absolute low energy levels? Uh, for me, uh, if I ask a question, I just uh, uh, just talk about that tea, right? Uh, that uh, honey and ginger mix decoction, actually. So that actually helped me a lot. So uh, like if I feel a bit low and all, I just, just sip a cup of it and uh, this helps me a lot. And moreover, the hydration level is, uh, is a, like a critical. You should drink, keep on drinking water, right? So, uh, apart from that, I didn't have anything like energy supplement or nothing. It's just a normal, like a breakfast, lunch, dinner kind of things. I had some chocolates and all in my bag. And as I told, I just lost interest in eating them as well. But you never shared with me. Hey, I shared with you. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. You want to come? She is my daughter. She wanted to see. Say hi. She's Shriya. Hi. You can see. Hello. Yes, Shriya. How are you? <laughs> I still remember the way she shouted on the phone. Oh, you guys able to hear, no? That way yeah. The phone, right? When I call. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Siti Appa. Hi, this is Ria. How are you? Yeah. Hey, Ria. Hi, I'm good. Good. How are you? I'm good. Hi, Shia. Hi. Thanks for joining in, Ria. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I just wanted to ask you one question. Yeah. When you were sh uh, shooting the snow leopard, didn't you, uh, like, you know, you saw it live in front of yourself, but yeah. didn't you get scared it might attack you or something? No, that was the last thing in my mind, actually. I don't know why I didn't feel that. So one thing is that the distance was there. So uh, it is not, uh, because I was using the 600 mm, right? The pictures are very close, right? But uh, the distance wise, they were not so close, right? And in between, we have a deep valley was there. We are in one reach and the snow leopard was in the other, other reach, actually. And, uh, and he was just walking in that uh, mountain. He can't come, uh, like immediately he can't come, right? So we'll get that right so but uh but your excitement but get... your excitement level was to some other another level uh <laughs> while seeing it right right exactly so and that was the last thing in came in my mind that it will attack us <laughs> <laughs> so how was the how was the experience of seeing the wild life animal in the open or uh with comparing it to seeing a wildlife animal in the zoo caged uh, you don't believe ria after i started seeing animals in wild i stopped going to zoo right so uh, you will not actually kind of uh, i'm not uh, like a kind of a putting up a debate here whether you should have a zoo or not but this is like you are killing the spirit of the wilderness in that animal if you are putting them in a 
case or in a secluded places, right? Definitely their attitude, their nature, everything changes. They are no more a wild animal, right? So there is a definitely a difference, right? And even I don't encourage Shriya to go to Jiju also. We don't go to zoo anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm done with asking questions. <laughs> Thanks, Ria. Hi. Any other questions we have? Uh, yeah, nothing on the chat as well. I guess. So cool, Suchi. I think this was a phenomenal talk for a Saturday evening. I think it is. Thank you um, so much. And like I said, I don't. Know, like I said again, I don't mind repeating myself again. But every time you give this talk, it actually becomes better. So it's, it's phenomenal <laughs> that way. And uh, thanks for this. Thank you so and much. Thanks. Cool. Yeah. And thanks everyone for joining us on a Saturday evening. Uh, have a good rest of the weekend. And Suchi, we hope to listen to you a lot more after this as well. Let's see. Definitely. I also equally enjoy sharing my experience over and over, over and leaving it once again. Right. So cool. Thank you for Thank arranging you. this, I say. <laughs> Thank you so much, Suchi. Thank you. Thank you so much. Cool. Thank you so much. So we'll have so we'll have a few more talks coming up this week, which we'll probably post it up on our Instagram and okay. we'll send out an email uh, to whoever's joined. Yeah, talk. thank you for the email. Actually, I, I actually otherwise I wouldn't have known this uh, thing there. Cool. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'll keep my eyes and ears open and keep watching. Like, when is the next option for us to go there? And we'll be there. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.